Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Would you pray with me? Mm -hmm. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart mm. be acceptable in your sight, for you are my strength and my redeemer. Let us all say amen. I'm going to lower this mic just a little. They don't, they don't make them for people who are five feet two. <laughs> the uh, introduction that Pastor Beth gave you um, is, is a little bit um, dated. So I was kind of retired. <laughs> uh, and that's another story for another day amen amen um, I'm very much active in ministry and I want you to know that I absolutely love it I love the Lord and I love God's people and I love the work that he's called me to do amen and I'm grateful for the opportunity to be with you this morning. I was with you last year via live stream. And so I'm happy to be in your presence uh, this year. Amen. <laughs> I welcomed uh, Pastor Beth by saying welcome to Oakland, but she kind of like, she kind of like me, like she, I was retired, so she was away, but she's back. That's, so that's, that's kind of, we're kind of on the same page. I'm grateful for Sister Tamara uh, and her music ministry, amen? amen. Her, I know her son quite well, and he's quite the gifted musician as well. And I was telling her that the children who were seated behind us were singing along. And uh, the little girl, she was reaching those same notes that Tamara was reaching. And I said, oh, we've got a singer here. And both of them, she and the young boy, they both were singing. And I was just, just delighted. I had a stereo effect going <laughs> in front of me and behind me. I'm grateful uh, for this opportunity, and I just want to say that I have some wonderful friends who are members here, and a cousin who's a member here, and so I'm glad to be in your presence today. And I wanted to read to you this text myself because I'm reading to you from the message translation. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute, too. Amen. <laughs> but the writer, Eugene Peterson, pins it this way. The problem as God gave Habakkuk to see it, God, how long do I have to cry out for help before you listen? How many times do I have to yell help? murder, police, before you come to the rescue? Why do you force me to look at evil, stare trouble in the face day after day, anarchy and violence break out, quarrels and fights all over the place, law and order fall to pieces, justice is a joke. The wicked have the righteous hamstrung and stand justice on its head. And I skip down a few, pa a few verses and it says, look around. It's what God is saying back to him. Look around at the godless nations. Look long and hard. Brace yourself for a shock. Something's about to take place and you're going to find it hard to believe. I'm about to raise up Babylonians to punish you. Babylonians fierce and ferocious, world-conquering Babylon, 
grabbing up nations right and left, a dreadful and terrible people, making up its own rules as it goes by. They're out to kill. Death is on their minds. They collect victims like squirrels gathering nuts. Why is God silent now? God, you're from eternity, aren't you? The prophet asked God. Holy God, we aren't going to die, are we? God, you chose Babylonians for your judgment work. Rock solid God, you gave them the job of discipline. But you can't be serious. You can't condone evil. So why don't you do something about this? Why are you silent now? This outrage, evil men swallow up the righteous and you stand around to watch. Are you going to let this go on and on? Will you let this Babylonian fisherman fish like a weekend angler, killing people as if they're nothing but fish? And I wanna talk to you from the title, Justice is a Joke. Justice is a Joke. I want you to know that I was not pleased with being assigned to this particular passage of scripture. I want you to know that I don't count it as one of my favorites, amen. <laughs> because now in celebrating 45 years of preaching, I'm always looking for a word of hope to leave with the listener. And as I read this particular chapter, it is primarily met with doom and gloom. The prophet utilizes his time and energy questioning the sovereignty of God. And in fact, he gives God a piece of his mind about the way things are looking in his eyes. He's even questioning God about the way things are being governed in the world. As I read and reread this text in several different translations, trying to get myself some help, amen. I saw the current state of this world and this nation in particular. And I too thought of the times when I really needed some clarity and answers from God. Anybody else been in that place? If you and I are truthful, that hasn't been very long ago. In fact, some of us came out of last year saying, I sure hope 2023 is better than 2022. Some of us even questioned last month, the month of January, while some scratched our heads last week. In fact, some of us were puzzled about this morning's outcome. And a few of us are asking questions right now. God, what are you going to do about this? What are you going to do about the economy? How are you going to fix gun violence? What are you going to do about Oakland? What are you going to do to help my children? What are you going to do to help my marriage? It is a question of what we learned in seminary is theodicy. The Odyssey, which means if your God is so good, then why is there evil in the world? The Odyssey. If God is so just, why do bad things happen to good people? If God is all that and a bag of chips and a Diet Coke, <laughs> why does he allow hurt, harm, and death to come to innocent children? Why do good people die and bad people seem to flourish? I know a lot of good people that have gone in the prime of their lives, yet I know some other people. You'll get that on the way home. <laughs> I know some other people. I'm not calling any names, but God, if you pick in names, I could have made a few recommendations, a few suggestions. 
or you could have swapped out one for the other. Amen. I'm not telling you how to do your job. I'm just saying that was a joke. Amen. Habakkuk is letting God know exactly how he feels by asking him, why do the wicked prosper? And how long will you allow this to go on? Then God gives him an answer that I believe that the prophet replied to by mumbling under his breath. It would have been better off if you hadn't answered. I believe that's what he said under his breath kind of the way we used to answer mama under our breath when we were kids. And then she would say, what did you say? And we would yell, nothing. God and Habakkuk are having a dialogue. They're holding a conversation. They're talking to one another in this text. They're going back and forth. He's saying, God, what are you going to do about this injustice in the land? And God answers, I'm going to put the Babylonians in charge and let them run everything. Habakkuk says, wait, what? <laughs> God replied, I'm, I'm going to put the Babylonians in charge. I'm going to allow those who've wreaked havoc in the lives of others to take charge. I'm going to allow it to look like evil is winning and justice is non-existence. There will be days of asking if I'm listening. You'll be asking if I'm watching. Innocent bystanders will become victims. Hardworking families will lose everything. Families will live in their cars. The elderly won't be able to get good health care. Sound familiar? You will wonder why those who are supposed to protect cause harm. You will think justice is a joke. Amen. When you see the Tyree Nichols family grieve, when you see his mother, when you see Trayvon Martin's parents, when you see Sandra Bland's family, when you see Tamir Rice's mother, the families of those in Southern California last week, the families of those in Half Moon Bay, those in the Central Valley, the shootings in Oakland, break-ins, assaults, and senseless violence, you will think justice is a joke. And then you'll say in your own life, God, why am I sick? Why did I lose my loved one? Where is my child? What about my job? What about my marriage? What about my hopes? What about my dreams? God, what are you going to do about this situation? I wish I had some truth tellers in here today that say every now and then I've got to ask God, what are you going to do about what's going on in my life? God, how are you going to fix this situation? How am I going to get through this? How am I going to make it? Why do I stay in a vicious cycle? I fast, I pray, I study, I treat people right, amen? And yet I ask why? This prophet questions God, why, how, when? And all of us find ourselves in that same place at one time or another. Some of us are there right now. The purpose of this text, and I'm telling you I had to dig to get to the purpose of this text. <laughs> the purpose of this text is to take us from despair to hope. Amen. The purpose of this message, like the words of the prophet, is to help us reach into what David calls that inward part. The part where he says, be still and know that I am God. There is an experiential part of you that will awaken and take charge in spite of, in the midst of all that is going on. There is an inward part of you that knows that in spite of, there is a God. Amen. When David was in the depths of despair, in one breath he asked, 
where is God? In the next breath he said, if I ascend up to heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, you're there too. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. So when I think that justice is a joke, I have to remember that the just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. So if the just shall live by faith, the action of justice comes from the people who are just. Let me say it again. So if the just shall live by faith, the action of justice must come from those who are just. Instead of me looking for it to come from other people, I need to depend on that part that's deep down inside of me. Amen. It's my faith. It's my belief. It's my trust that's going to guide me through these difficult times. I am the one I've been waiting for. Hallelujah. We are the ones we've been waiting for. So let us let justice roll down like rivers and righteousness like a mighty stream. Let us be the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Let us prepare straight the way of the Lord. And when we do that, the prophet Isaiah says, every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain shall be made low and the crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And then he says, and when we do that, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. When the just rise up and use their faith, the text says, and all flesh shall see it together. My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me when I pray. Take all my guilt away. Oh, let me from this day be wholly thine. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. I invite Miss Tamara forward to share uh, more of her gifts with us. Amen. 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 Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God as our Father, oh, brothers, all are we. Let me walk with my brother in perfect harmony. Begin with me. Let this be the moment now. Oh, with every step I take, let this be my solemn. 
a vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternal. Live 